Hello guys! Welcome back from another video live with Diri! And here's my husband named Kevin. Okay guys, today guys, we are going to set up our honey beehive. Yeah, is that correct? Honey? Honey? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're making our bee yard. Yeah, bee yard. So, so we set up our hives. Yeah, so guys, we we figured it out where we finally put our honey bee hives. We're gonna show you that later. But before that, guys, we are we're gonna need this pallet here. Did you guys can see that? We're gonna need that. But before we can use that, my husband here, Kevin, he needs to chop that firewood so that we can use it to use our firewood inside the house and hold it inside the house. So that's what we're gonna do first. Uh huh. And I like how how you change that. When we were talking about what we were gonna do here, you were gonna say. <laughs> I know. First thing we need to do is we need to liberate this pallet by us splitting and, you, and loading this wood into the truck so that we can haul it to the house and get it inside so we can get the pallet and take it to our bee yard. I want to take that back. I noticed okay. how you conveniently said Kevin. <laughs> okay. Going First, to do guys, this. Kevin's going to do that. We're going to do this. Nah, no, right. this you better record it to prove it. You better record it to prove it. Okay, honey, what are we going to do first? Well... You chopped the firewood, I've right? I've already been chopping the firewood. Why well, you yeah. been standing there looking pretty watching me do it? <laughs> Guys, I just like watching Kevin work out in the yeah, outside. Yeah, we know. Okay. Just load it. Here, put these yeah. on so you don't get a splinter, huh? Okay. <laughs> so you load the wood. Guys, you know what? Today, right now, it's like 50 degrees. It's a little bit chilly because it's windy. Yeah. So... Kevin, he already chopped firewood. Oh. Yeah, I split this originally about... Huh? I split this originally about five months ago. Yeah, but needs split. Yeah, so it's still kind of big though. I it. It's drying up the burn. It's not quite yet ready to be chopped. Yeah, it's not quite ready to be chopped. Yeah, it's not quite ready to be chopped. It's drying up the burn. It's not quite yet fully seasoned red oak. <laughs> though it is dry enough to burn. So we're, we're going to get it out of the way. Liberate this pallet. Try to take everything with us. We need to build our bee yard to the bee yard location so that we don't have to run back and forth, back and forth. That's one of the things I'm trying to teach Miss Dearly. When you got a place this big, when you're going to go do a project, take everything you need to do that project in with. In one trip. Yeah, in one trip. Because if you're running back and forth for this, back and forth for that, which she doesn't seem to mind doing, I do. It wears you out and then you don't have enough energy left to complete the project. Yeah, okay. You, you wear that. I'm going to get my own gloves. Okay. All right. So let us get this wood taken care of. Bird. Those are frogs, honey. Oh, frogs. <laughs> it's okay. You'll get used to the frogs in the pond at some point. All right, guys. Here's proof in the pudding. Here's a woolly worm. They say that the more black that is on these things, it's a it means the worse winter. I just found this in a wood pile. It's probably been in there all winter, and uh, its body coloring does uh, only has a little bit of black on the ends, would suggest that it's going to be a mild winter. This is March, the tail end of winter. It's actually officially spring tomorrow. So this is the last day of winter. And what I would say is I can confirm the old wives tale. There was hardly any black, which would mean, would mean a mild winter. And we did indeed have a very mild winter this year. Go live in the meadow. You're not cold, honey? No. Well, I'm splitting firewood, honey, so I'm not cold. Wow, you're so strong, honey. I still expect you to help me. <laughs> trying to flatter me to get out of work? <laughs> no. <laughs> wow. I'm gonna start stack this firewood, okay? That'd be great, honey. <laughs> Actually, it 
No, we know the weather is so far back. Oh, yeah, I love it. Uh, that thing about the wind, yeah, it gets a little bit chilly when the wind blows, but if you're staying busy doing stuff, it's not cold. It's welcomed. All right, so we hauled the truckload of firewood over. We've got it stacked on the back porch underneath the awning. So the good news there is we don't have to go out and make firewood runs for at least the next week. Now I put the roll of vapor lining in the back seat of the truck. I need eight cinder blocks. Now we're gonna go get that pallet that we've liberated only after putting our beehive box in the truck as well. Like I'm trying to teach Miss Dearly, when you're doing stuff out here, take everything you need so you don't have to run back for anything because you will wear yourself out running out, running around back and forth, making unnecessary trips. Hey, right, now it's time to load the pallet. It's very heavy, definitely a two person lift. Honey, you remember how I taught you to lift with your legs, not your back? Yeah. Okay, so how should we do this? End on end? <laughs> Which end do you want, that end? End, end, end. Okay, on three. Okay. Remember, let, don't, uh, don't, honey, <laughs> Miss Dearly has a tendency to lift with her legs like this. I hurt my back many times. And she comes up with her, remember, come up okay. with your legs. Okay, you ready? Uh-huh. One, two, three. There you go. Good job, honey. Now. Okay, now what? I'm going to put my in part. Oh, hold on. Be careful. Man. Hey, swing your end around that way. Okay. Hold on. Hit on, hit on. Hit on, hit on. Wow, this is heavy, no? Yes, no. Here, you want me to take the end? Okay, I got it now. Okay. Okay, we'll just get back out of the way. Okay. You know, if those blocks weren't in there, I could slide this right in. Okay, but... wait. You want me no, to... No, 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 I want you to stay out of the way so I don't hurt you. Okay. I just got a little bit lower. Oh, wow. Whoops. Wow, perfect, honey. There, yeah, I got Good it. Good job. Okay, guys, look at that. <laughs> it looks, it's already beautiful, and then it feels like so exciting. So now, with no further ado, it's about time to put our beehive box. <laughs> So, how that looks? 
that showing up? Yep. Here's our first beehive, honey beehive box. Yeah. On first our, uh, ever in the homestead. <laughs> there you go, yeah. Give, let them see the, the box there. Yeah. Okay, now it's it's just to the left of center here because we actually like this product so much that we've ordered another one and it should yeah. be here today. Uh, if not, it'll be here within the next 48 hours. We're gonna put it together and we've reserved its spot here. Mm -hmm. And if we decide to get into this, we could put easily three boxes here, maybe as many as four. But this is just the beginning. Uh, as you can tell, okay, we, we're gonna have to put an electric fence around this at some point yeah. because we do have black bears in our area. Uh, we, we saw five last year alone here on our property. Not yeah. this far down because we are a quarter of a mile away from the woods. This is just a tree line back here that separates our property from a neighboring property. So the bears aren't very aggressive in regard to coming down here. I'm going to give you some uh, pointers that I discovered during my research on bee boxes as far as placement goes. They have southern exposure. That is the south that way. They get full sun during the day. The colonies do extremely well in warmer temperatures. So that's why you want to have them in the sun. But as far as bears go, uh, you're, you're best if you can stay away from the edge of a forest because the bears love to raid bee boxes that are just right there at the edge of the forest because they feel safe and secure by being able to take refuge in that forest. If you can get, I mean, we're a quarter of a mile away. Your space might not be that, that big, but if you can get 50 yards away from the forest, you're better off. Number two, if you actually mow the area around where your bee boxes are, that intimidates the bear itself. That bear knows that that is man's domain and bears don't like to expose themselves by crossing wide open spaces. So they, now they might lurk within the tree lines and that is why, thirdly, we just definitely, we're gonna have to put up an electric fence around our bee boxes if yeah. we wanna protect them. That's just, from all the research I've seen, everything, I've watched other YouTube videos, I've Googled it, I've read articles, we have to have an electric fence. So that's gonna be part of the next uh, step in this project. But before we even get to that part, before we are done here, today is officially the last day of winter Yep. It's March 20. Tomorrow's the first day of spring. Here in Central Virginia, the wild honeybee swarms start coming out, looking for new colonies for the old queen who's given up her home for the new queen in late March, which is starting tomorrow through early June. So now that we've got our box in place, we're actually trying to capture a wild swarm. We're not buying bees. We're capturing wild swarms. We're going to bait our box with a product called Swarm Commander, not sponsored. This just seems to be what everybody else was using and having success with. So we're gonna spray just one spray uh, just inside the entrance. On, on, we're gonna take the lid off, spray it in the top of the box, and then we're gonna spray one spray on the outside of the entrance, and that's it. You don't wanna overdo it. Listen, it's, it's packed with pheromones. So if you think of a lovely smelling perfume that might attract you to a, wonder, to a lovely lady, that's great, unless she puts on too much. That doesn't attract anybody. As beautiful as she might be and as good as it might smell, if it's overpowering, you, you have to keep a distance, your eyes will water. Same thing with honeybee lures, okay? So, speaking of beautiful, lovely women, honey, if you'll take the top off the box, okay. I'll bait it. Okay. Like yep, like that, and then I'm gonna take this part off, and we have our 10, slats in here ready for honey so I'm going to take the middle one out and spray one spray just right on the inside of the box that looked like multiple sprays but it wasn't we've never used this so I had to squirt it a few times to get that's the... all yeah that's, wow. that's one wow that's nice. did, did you hear what I just said honey yeah <laughs> it, it looks like it's not enough no well but it's enough when it comes to uh, <laughs> Honeybee attractant and perfume. Yeah, I understand. There can be too much of a good thing. <laughs> yeah. So now put the lid back on. Okay. And then step back, and I'm going to put one spray right here at the entrance. There. So we've got one spray in the top, one spray at the entrance. Now it's That's still been nice. still been getting cold at night, but during the day here, the next few days it's going to be in the mid to upper upper 60s. Swarm could come by. Here's some more advice. Uh, and again, only time will tell how, eff how effective our methods are here. Uh, but I'm following to a T what I, I garnered from, from my research. 
there's a road right down here below. It's not too far. It's within sight. And there's also a power line running above that road. Uh, research shows that honeybees, when they send out their troops, their centuries, to find the new place for the, new, for the old queen to have her new hive, they do follow roadways. They do follow power lines. So that's another reason we picked this location. There is both a roadway and a power line just right down here. Okay, they follow tree lines. Yeah. There's a tree line here. Okay, we've got southern exposure for full sun. And another thing, we never come up in this area. The only time we're ever in this part of our property is if we are mowing the grass. So there's no pedestrian foot traffic here. You want to keep that in mind too so that you're not giving stress to your honeybees once you get them. Okay, we have a water source. Our pond is about 200 yards away in that direction. It's close enough to where they can have ample water. And we are centrally located between our fruit orchard that has approximately 40 variously assorted fruit trees and our garden. It's an exact distance between the two, it's similar same distance between the two. So this is a central location. That's why we put them here. From this point, all we've got to do is put up the electric fence. Yep, that's it. All right, hon, now this is your channel. I, I just <laughs> no, common, I I commandeered it there to give all that information. Yeah. What would you like to tell the viewers about our honeybee <laughs> yard here that we've created today? I hope guys you enjoyed this video. Hey guys, that's it for today. I hope guys you really enjoyed this video. Look at that. See? And thank you, thank you guys so much for watching. And I, I hope I'll see you next time for more. Bye-bye.